Okay, so what, what we were doing yesterday, uh, finding area underneath the curve. So what we were doing is we were, you know, taking some function like this, and we were drawing little rectangles and finding the area underneath the curve. So we're letting those rectangles approximate the area underneath the curve. Well, this is, this is so important in calculus um, that it is given the name of finding Riemann sums. And I, I spelled that wrong. It should be two n's. So Riemann sums, the idea of finding Riemann sums, what this is is approximating area underneath the curve. So approximating area under a curve by constructing rectangles. And we're using the area of the rectangles to approximate the area underneath the curve. So uh, we've got three depictions up here. The first depiction um, right here, we're looking at the graph f of x equals x squared, and we're looking from 0 to 1. And what we have here is the exact area. That's the exact area in the shaded. So we're just, you know, going from the curve down to the x-axis and shading it in. Now, we don't yet know how to find that area. What we know um, is to approximate two different ways. So we've got our second graph and our third graph. In our second graph, we're approximating from above, or this is called a right bound approximation because what we're doing if we look in this first you know, from 0 to 0.25 what we've done is we've chosen the right value of my function to approximate that area and then from you know the next interval from 0.25 to 0.5 on my curve here on this curve y equals x squared I've chosen the right hand point as the one to get my graph and notice in this case, for this particular graph, um, we are over approximating the area. This, these blue sections that I'm drawing are areas that are that are incorrectly included in my error approxim in my area approximation. Um, in graph number three, what I'm doing is I'm approximating from below, or this is called the left bound. So in each interval from zero to 0.25. In the first one, I've chosen my smallest value, in this case, 0, and that's why I don't see anything. And from 0.25 to 0.5, you know, I could have chosen this value or this value. I'm using my left bound to get the area underneath the curve. So all of this blue area is not being counted. It's being ignored. It should be counted, but it's not because I have, error, I have errors inherent in this method. And so from... 0.5 to 0.75. Again, I'm choosing my smallest value between the two. And that's my area. That's my approximated area. But again, I'm leaving out critical area. It's being ignored in my approximation. So if we think about, you know, how, how would I go about and calculate each of these? So in my in my right bound, in my right bounded, um, or my upper bound, I call it upper four. And so the the U stands for the upper that I'm using my right side. The four stands for four intervals. Um, and so each, the base of each one of these rectangles, the base of each of these rectangles is, well, the whole distance is one and I divide it into four sections. So each base of the rectangle has a width of one-fourth. So in calculating um, the area, I've got one-fourth, that's my base. Let's not cross off the four. So I have one-fourth, that's the base, and I'm multiplying it by f of one f of one-fourth. Well, what is that f of one-fourth? Going back up here, That f of one fourth, that is this value here. That's this y value, because this is one fourth. 
Um, so this first term is finding this area. And then I have one fourth again, and that comes from my width times f of one half. Well, f of one half, here's one half. That's this height. So this green box has a height of f of one half and a width of one fourth. And then the area of this neck, I'll use a different marker. The area of this is, you know, it has a base of one fourth, base of one fourth, and a height of f of three fourths, because f of three fourths is that corresponding value, because this is three fourths. So that blue area is that is that one fourth times f of three fourths. Lastly, uh, my last one, uh, I've got again a base of one fourth and a height of f of one. So one fourth times f of one gives me my height, or sorry, gives me the area of the last rectangle. So factoring out what I can do always in this, because we always have to have the same base length, I could factor out the one fourth. And what I'm left with is one fourth times f of one fourth, which is one sixteenth, times f of one half, four sixteenth, f of three fourths, and f of one. And we can get a, an approximation, an upper approximation for my area. Well, what about my lower approximation? So for my lower approximation, um, and we say L for, L again for lower, four for four intervals. For my lower approximation, um, for my first triangle, or sorry, my first rectangle, I've got a base of one fourth, and I'm choosing my left point, F of zero. So F of zero is my height, one fourth is my base, uh, which gives me an area of zero. And then I look at my next one, base of one fourth and a height of, well, I'm choosing that point as my height. So that height is F of one quarter. And then looking at this, base of one fourth times my height. My height here, that's at one half, is F of one half. So that gives me that area approximation. And then my last term, base of one fourth, and my height, the way I'm getting my height is my lower bound, so I'm choosing, uh, this is 3 quarters. This is f of 3 quarters. So that gave me my height. And this whole thing is the area of my last rectangle. Once again, I can factor out the 1 fourth. And then I'm left with, you know, z 0, which is f of 0, f of a fourth f of a half, and f of three-fourths. Once again, notice the similarities. So we have um, we have one-sixteenth, one-sixteenth, four-sixteenths, four-sixteenths, nine-sixteenth, nine-sixteenth. The only difference are my left, uh, in my lower one, um, I've got this left term, which doesn't exist, and in my upper one, I have this right term, which doesn't exist. And what we can see is the difference between my upper approximation and my lower approximation. So we can, um, th this definition looks a little confusing, but it, really if you, if you stick with it, it's, it's just exactly what we're doing. So for Riemann sums, it says let f be a function defined on the closed interval a to b. So we're saying, you know, we have some function that's defined between A and B. And we're going to subdivide A to B into N subintervals. So we're going to take this and we're going to have, you know, let, let's say we have N equals 3. We're going to divide it into three parts, equal parts, where each has length delta x1. So we're calling this, you know, delta x1, delta x2, delta x3, where each one of these 
each of those changes are equal in length. And then in each one of those intervals, we're going to choose an evaluation point. We're going to choose some point to represent our height. So in other words, let's say that we have some curve that looks like this. And we've got a bunch of intervals. So in one specific interval, you know, if we call this delta x, whatever, x2, let's say it's our second interval. <clears throat> now, what I've done is I've, I've pu I'm pulling out this section, and I'm representing it in three different ways. In the first representation of finding the area, what I'm doing, you know, if this is my delta x2, I'm using my left point. I'm using the left point to generate my y value. And in the second depiction, you know, I've got delta x2. I'm using my right point to generate my y value to get an area approximation. And in my third case, you know, given my change in delta x2, that's my the length of my subinterval, I'm choosing the midpoint to find, to approximate my y value, to get an approximation for the area. So in other words, I can either choose the left, in each subinterval, I can use the left point, I could use the right point, or I could use the midpoint in order to find an approximation for the area underneath that curve. This looks really, really confusing. Um, but in the next example, I hope that uh, you see that it's really not that confusing of an idea. So in the next example, what we're going to do is we're going to look at a left, a right, and a midpoint approximation for the area underneath the curve, the curve being sine of x plus 2. And we're going to use five intervals. And we're going to look at the area from x equals 0 to 5. So let, let's do that. So um, if we were to using our left point, here, uh, if we're using our left point and we've got five intervals looking between 0 to 5, so the total distance here, the total distance equals 5 divided by my number of intervals. So divided by n, which is 5, because I'm looking at 5 intervals. So each distance is 1. In my first approximation, where I'm using a left bound, I've got a distance of 1. And I'm multiplying it by, I'm using my left bound to get an approximation for y. So that height would be f of 0. Because I'm using that point when x equals 0 to get an approximation. Then plus, well, plus, the next curve, again, has a distance, a, a base of 1. And I'm multiplying it by, I'm using my right, or sorry, my left bound point to approximate my height. And that left bound point has a height of f of 1. And then plus, so now looking between 2 and 3, again, it has a base length of 1. And I'm going to use my left-hand point, which is f of 2, to approximate the area. So 1 times f of 2. Plus between... 3 and 4, I'm choosing my left, my left point. So I'm choosing this value to approximate the area. And that value, well, it has a base of 1. And that y value there that I chose was f of 3. And then for my last value, I'm looking at a base of 1, and I'm choosing that y value. So I've got a base of 1. And the y value I'm using is f of 4. So next video, we'll reconvene.
Vi